we're faced with this massive level of casualties giving rise to the kind of anger across society that is leading to these so-called insider killings. The U.S. military, of course, has acknowledged that only about 25 percent of those killings actually have anything to do with a, quote, Taliban infiltrator. The vast majority, they say, we don't know, but it seems to be personal animosity, personal grudges. What seems clear is that the personal grudges are actually grudges against an illegal occupation that is widely despised throughout the region. So when you see the rising number of casualties, and the casualties have continued to rise throughout the years of the surge and continuing to rise now, that the surge troops, the 33,000 official surge troops that President Obama sent in the first year of his presidency, those are now on their way out, but the number of casualties continues to rise. The consequences will be the same whether we pull out the troops last week, as I would have preferred, or at the end of 2014. There's going to be, unfortunately, almost certainly, a violent struggle for power in Afghanistan, very much like what happened the last time a foreign occupation ended. And in that case, when the Soviet Union pulled out, uh, there was a six-year civil war until finally the Taliban won that war with the support of the majority of the population at the time because they promised to bring an end to war. What this is going to mean politically, we don't know yet. The fact that the U.S. is now saying that they are not prepared to go forward on efforts to bring the Taliban into peace talks does not bode well for the possibility of the war ending sooner rather than later because what we know is that all wars, and this is, as you said, the longest war in U.S. history, every war ends with some kind of negotiation, some kind of discussion, some kind of agreement. That can be now, or it can be at the end of 2014. It's not going to qualitatively change the nature of that agreement or what happens on the ground.